All right, guys, let's get into it. So first of all, what is low frequency oscillators or oscillation? And essentially, what is an LFO, all right? We're also gonna look at FL Studio Mobile's brand new Wave Shaper plugin, as well as a free sample pack that came just the other day. So I'm pretty excited to talk about these few items. Why not get into it? Okay, so first of all, LFO is an acronym for Low Frequency Oscillator. And an LFO is a slow moving waveform that is mapped to different parts of a synth. So you may be familiar with Moog synthesizers, modular synthesizers. The term patch comes from modular synthesis where connecting patch cables to modules creates different sounds. Now we used to have to remember these or put tape on them or somehow re remember essentially where these patches were connected what the levels were so that we can get you know so that we could recall the shape and the sound nowadays we have synth patches which essentially just remember all the information for us and we just kind of like load the synth for future use like you know it's, it's pretty simple Lo save it for future use load it to recall those previous settings that we had okay we're also going to look at uh, LFOs can what essentially do is they can give your patch some type of movement okay and this movement of course is modulation guys we talked about modulation many times perhaps i will link a video in the description right now that's talking about some forms of modulation because there are many all right guys thanks for watching get your sound right whether headphones or speakers or something like that because we're going to explore the wave shaper plugin as well as some of the latest updates in the meantime i may do some stuff here and start you know adjusting things uh live for you guys right here by the way if you're curious to know this track right here is from my mega blends collection it actually didn't make the first cut not that it had any particular issues i just felt like it didn't match with the other eight instrumentals that were chosen so check out the link in the description if you're curious to know more about my mega blends collection now let's go into some of these sounds why not all right so what we got is first of all all you need to do quite simply is head over to the shop by clicking the FL Studio Mobile icon up to the top right and go to shop and essentially download this free pack and what you're going to get is some audio clips so why not check out these audio clips right now by clicking the plus and we're going to head over to audio clips right here and we will see right there WA production selection exports now what you're going to get here is a list of claps cymbals hi-hats kicks percussions, snares, and so much more. Well, all those within there. Let's just sample a couple of them. Just get a few auditions here, just take a look. Okay, these are some pretty nice sounds, guys. I've definitely used them to produce a couple of instrumentals so far since this pack has dropped you guys let me know what you've created some of these percussion sounds are really cool all right that's a nice one let's go for a couple more on this one i like that one that wood sound right so one thing i love about this is of course just free sounds right more packs you can't go wrong with more packs and these kicks are tuned i love it Ooh, so for those hard style lovers out there guys let me know if i should make a video on how to create your own custom hard style kicks let me know hear those Ooh. and of course like i said these are all tuned so you can go ahead and just mess with these on your keyboard up and down the scale and you'll be good Cool sounds, I really do dig them. Nice. Let's go through one more quick set over here. Let's go through the, let's go to the cymbals, why not? Let's see, we got some rides. Okay, we got some crashes. Yeah, these are tight, I, I dig these sounds. I would definitely jump in. So for, day, for today, we're not actually going to use these sounds. So why not just delete this channel and, and um, let's move on. Okay, so guys, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna choose some of these instruments here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create some type of 
shapes with our wave shaper so let's dive down into wave shaper let's add wave shaper super simply quick modules right it is a module it's it's a, an effect module so you cannot add it as an instrument just letting you know there's no wave shaper popping up here but once you're within the channel of your desired instrument then you can of course add the wave shaper there so i will first i'm going to add a limiter just because this could get wild so i'm just going to add a limiter Okay, let me add a limiter there and above the limiter. So I'm going to click there and go above, uh, insert above. And I'm going to add right here, Wave Shaper, guys, a brand new plugin. I'm super excited. All right, let's dive in. So Wave Shaper is a wave distortion effect, which maps your input signal, which would be the horizontal axis, okay? With your output signal, which is the vertical axis. So it's going to lock your x axis to the y axis and you hear already we're getting something going on okay this is in the shape tab Ooh, it's about to get wild let me bypass it just for the moment okay now the good thing about this is that you have a real-time modifiable graph where you can manually click and or tap and drag or swipe whatever way you want to look at it to get the shape that you want or let's put this back on or you can of course access directly the x-axis and the y-axis as you see now we're going to look at this area here very carefully the input signal is essentially what's coming in over here so the lower this is on the x-axis is the more it's going to be affected by this shape and of course the top right let's say would be kind of the output uh, reference visual if i could put it like that right some of your sounds are going to actually reach into the peak into the middle area of this graph which essentially will cause it to be to be affected no matter what but if you can adjust things with the y-axis to get it super low then of course guys we can essentially minimize the amount of effect that this wave shaper is having on your signal now this is good for electronic so like things like electric guitars okay because essentially the x and y-axis affect the start and end of the graph uh, the shapes where the x and y axis affects the start and the end of the graph are more like traditional transistor or dig dis uh, digital distortions or perhaps analog distortions okay so essentially what we're working with is the peaks of the input signals right so we'll continue on and, we'll, and i'll explain more of this as we go on right the stereo spread modifies the shape of the left and right slightly the left and right channel slightly to create some type of stereo effect so maybe it's kind of a, an illusion of stereo but it's not necessarily an illusion it's really altering the left and right signals in some ways differently so that there is some form of separation okay and of course with shape you can choose a variety of shapes you guys can see these shapes for yourselves i'll go through them quickly some of them get really wild right you guys see that okay let's go to some more Right, you got that sign type of look there. And guys, imagine this recording automation for this. Whew. Maybe we'll dive in through a, to a live beat session and we'll do some automation. You guys let me know. Let's look at this. Okay, got that nice saw. Okay, look at this. Look at this one, guys. Look at this shape here. Super cool. And the last one, of course, Cyclone. Look at this. Super cool. Okay, let's leave that one for now on this particular sound. And let's let's actually lower the mix super quickly. Okay, let's do it. And then, okay, so let's move on, okay? Let's move on to the amp um, tab, okay? So amp, first of all, we have drive, which boosts the input signal to the shape. So again, if you're thinking of the shape, the, the beginning of the input signal being down here, you can boost it so that more of the, of the signal, the, more of the peaks of your input signal are actually being affected by this graph or by this wave shape. Pretty simple, okay? Um, now, it's useful to drive peaks, like I said, into this area, right, uh, of, the, of the wave shaper. And, and essentially, that's one way you can help to, if it's a quiet sound, you can help to push it up to make sure that it does get some type of effect. For now, 
I'm gonna keep it down because I think we're pretty much okay. Let's look at auto gain. Auto gain can have some, some potential undesirable effects, perhaps some type of pumping, or perhaps you can get some uh, changes in your dynamics or your, your levels, depending on how loud you're pushing this in. But you may also find that when you use auto gain, it will help to maintain a consistent level despite the drive, okay? Without the drive, the results could vary, okay? And that brings me to post gain. Of course, this is how you adjust the output level. Let's put auto gain back on. Okay, so we have a consistent level. I like that. And of course, the mix knob over here to the right is your typical dry wet. So all the way to the right would be wet as in your signals coming in completely affected by this or going out, pardon me, completely affected by this shape. Or if it's for, further to the left, then your signal will have no effect. Well, sorry, the wave shaper will have no effect on the output signal, the output signal. So here we go. Let's dive in a little bit deeper. Let's go to, let's actually add wave shaper to another sound. What do you guys think? Let's add wave shaper to this one. Let's scroll down and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a limiter just in case we get too wild. I'll bring the limiter down to about minus two decibels. And again, insert above and I'm going to insert another wave shaper. Here we go. So let's choose, let's choose a sound that we like quickly. Let's just say we like that, okay? Adjust the stereo spread. We're going to an amp, let's distort it a bit. There we go, so you guys hear that, you hear that? Let's bypass it. You hear that? I'll bypass it again. And I'll add it back on. Okay, so guys, these are levels, okay? As you see, let's go, let's go here again. You can see that Wave Shaper is in the levels section. So we're talking about actual level of your sound of course some distortion qualities here you can hear that for yourself with the drive okay so we're looking at the input level as it relates to the output level okay so let's drop the drive down so now you guys hear that sound that we're working with here we've got two sounds that have got the wave shaper on them now let's go to the eq tab okay high cut as you see here will remove high frequencies listen to this carefully It's this sound right here, okay? Let's solo this one here, so you guys can hear. Okay, so it's set to lead. Let me get you guys this sound very clearly so you can hear. So let's put these on, this and this. There we go. So now you can hear more clearly, specifically this sound. Watch this, let's go back and let's add that back in too. Ooh. Hey, 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 let's add that in. Okay, let's drop the, let's put the mini synth back in. So now we're gonna get more sounds. Here we go. Let's drop this up. So as you guys hear, watch this. I'm going to adjust the high cut. Tell me if you notice the difference. It should get brighter. I'm gonna bring it down. And of course this can all be mod if, um, modulated. It can be all automated. Let's drop this. Let's drop that out so you're only hearing this sound here. All right, so let's do it one more time. Okay, let's go back again. Here we go. All right, you guys hear that? Okay, great. Now, okay, so again, high cut will remove high frequencies and this can be great for adjusting or removing certain aggressive sounds, perhaps some really, really harsh or bright distortion like you guys heard earlier with some of these shapes that we were doing just a moment ago with this sound down here, okay? And then, of course, uh, it can be useful, again, to tame those things, but also it could be used for removing digital artifacts. Let's continue on, okay? Super quickly. And of course, the low cut is a great way to remove super low frequency ranges, allowing you to make more of a clear mix, right? Now we have post EQ adjustments here, which I really like. You've got the boost, you can boost or cut these different bands, either the low or high, right? Now the bass frequency right here, has a 100 hertz cutoff frequency, okay? As well, the treble one has a 3,300 hertz cutoff frequency range, okay? As you hear right there, do some adjustments there. Drop that out there. And of course, the mid frequency is a band filter, which is used for the mid frequency position or essentially the center. And of course, you have a mid gain, which allows you to 
increase or decrease the mid gain the mid level all right let's move on to the lfo shape because this is also one of the more interesting parts of this this uh tool right so what we have is let's go back to this one let's get everything going on why not let's just get everything going on okay there we go okay so what we have here let's go down oh here we go and we are on this channel right here so there we go we're gonna adjust the lfo now okay so lfo shape it, uh, you can first choose a shape right and you have sine or saw which essentially vary back and forth but then you also have a square which will flip in two very different extremes or two different states as you guys are really familiar with square waves i'm sure right sync option allows you to sync it to the tempo right so it's essentially tempo locked which i really do love and then you also have the ability to let's go here let's change the shape to another one and let's go put this up here there do a couple of yeah there okay so there you go guys now watch now we've got some automation right i it's synced it's going slower okay let's change it from let's go to sign more fluid motion okay so again sync will have it will lock it tempo lock the tempo relative to the beats and of course the bars now sync off is just a free controlling uh free form free flowing lfo where you can adjust the speed as you wish now the x and the x mod and the y mod of course that's scaling for the lfo effect on the x parameter of course you can adjust the shape tab you'll see what i mean by x and y right x and y let's get something a little more drastic just for the purposes okay you can adjust you can modify the x and y axes as you see right there okay and this is again scaling for these axes i think this is really good guys i hope this video was useful to you i want to hear you guys go out there and just create some wild stuff like when i say wild stuff i mean go in go off let me see what you guys have drop a comment in the descriptions in the description of the video in the comments is what i mean to say right and let me know what you guys like most about this particular tool i myself let's do this there we go okay <laughs> sorry i myself am having a blast with this tool it's been a lot of fun um all the best to you guys of course again winning with blends justin blends guys watch this video on how to do sends and returns right here in fl studio mobile or any other desktop software that you're using mobile app it's up to you guys so much cool information here all the best again winning with blends justin blends back at it again see you on the next one take it easy